Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, I got a, a great uh, question here from Marantha. Marantha B7. I'm, I probably didn't say it right, but um, first of all, Whedon 1051919 says, When I was first saved 30 years ago, I thought maybe 5% were saved who were in the church with me. But I'm thinking it's the opposite now. Okay. 30 years ago, yeah, yeah, maybe there was 5% in the church saved. I, you know, there's no way to know then or now. But, uh, you know, like for me, uh, <laughs> there's something wrong uh, with what's going on in the churches today when they all get it wrong. And they're getting all sorts of stuff wrong. But what a, the one consistent thing that I notice in the churches are uh, most of them do not believe, most all of them do not believe in the Bible that they hold in their hands. That's a problem right there. Right? And then if you don't understand Bible prophecy, that's another problem. And... If you don't know the simple things like eternal life, <laughs> I, I just don't know how you could, you know, pretend to be saved. But it, nevertheless, I, I think to me it's pretty apparent, man, when everybody's got it wrong, and uh, that's a clear sign that hey, we're right there, really close to the end. Because <clears throat> you notice in Matthew twenty-four and Mark thirteen. Luke 21, where it says, Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God let things play out the way they are, there will come a point to where there's nobody saved. And why is that? And that's, well, that's because nobody believes. And why is nobody believing? Because they're deceived. And the very first thing that Jesus says when he's asked about the end of the world Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right? And so that's that's a key sign, a key sign that this is the end of the world, or we're getting really close to the end of the world. It's a sign that we are near the end and it could happen today, it could happen tomorrow, it could be a long time from now and just might as well be ready today, might as well just enjoy this day right just be thankful and grateful for this day and not worry about nothing just read your bible uh, and enjoy and love one another I mean why not right and so here uh, Verse 22, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So, it's my very strong opinion that we got to be really close. When I see everybody, everybody's getting it wrong. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And why in the world would anybody believe this guy right there? I, <laughs> guy doesn't understand nothing. Yeah, he's got it all wrong. It's as if he has absolutely no understanding whatsoever. So, anyways, let's get into uh, this, uh, this, these questions here. Um, so, and uh, I appreciate this very much. So, let's take a look. Can you please help me? Or, I'm sorry. Can you please help place Isaiah 65, 17 through 20 in time? I'm curious to know whether you believe this is fulfilled already or when in time do you believe it will take place. Perhaps you believe it is just spiritual only, just like you believe the thousand year reign is. All right, now hold on a second here. Marantha, Marantha, gosh, I can't, I have a hard time with English. First of all, let's clarify something here. Okay. Uh, I do not believe the thousand... There, first of all, there is no thousand year reign. I, <laughs> I say this in every single video. 
there is no thousand year reign right if we go to revelation 20 it never says jesus reigns a thousand years it never says we reign a thousand years um, it does say that we reign with christ a thousand years but it never mentions this idea of a thousand year reign it's not there i know I, I get it. People say it over and over and over. Thousand year reign, thousand year reign, thousand year reign, thousand year reign, thousand year reign. And get, it'll get you to say thousand year reign, thousand year reign, thousand year reign, thousand year reign. But it's not in the Bible. It's talking about a thousand year period, which is right now. Right now, we that are saved right now, we live and reign with Christ right now. Okay. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ right now. And we reign with him, with him right now. All right. So there is no thousand year reign. This is just a period of time. And it's not I mean it's not spiritual only cuz we're we are both of the flesh and the spirit and there are those who are just of the flesh so it can't be just spiritual only. All right. So yeah, little things like that matter. I agree with you that, yes, of course, Christ reigns forever. Luke ch chapter 1, verse 33. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Huh? And of his kingdom there shall be no end. <clears throat> right? No end. They reign forever. He reigns forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So the, he doesn't reign a thousand years. I mean, people are lying. And just because people repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over, and then over and over and over and over and over and over, doesn't make it true. It'll never make it true. Jesus reigns for ever now right, we can get into this here too um but yeah make no mistake about it he reigns forever anybody that suggests oh he reigns a thousand years no he don't it, the bible never says he reigns a thousand years number one that's number one the bible never says he reigns a thousand years all right, so let's get into, let's go back here. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Let me read this real quickly here. All right. All right, so let's get back to this here. Okay, yes, agree. Um, agree with you. Yes, of course, Christ reigns forever. He is king now and forevermore, and he does not change. Good point. He will his will, excuse me, his will happens physically on earth as it does spiritually in heaven. Um, well, I, I'm not sure about the wording of that. His will is on earth as in, he is, he, he preaches to us that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth spiritually. Okay. So, I don't want to dance around uh, too much on that, but serious answers only, please. Even though I know you love to make jokes, hee <laughs> hee. But are you saying that right now the nations are not being deceived by the devil? Revelation 20, verse 3. When I look at the world, my heart breaks because of all the deception. All right, the key here is nations you want you got to make a distinction between nations and individuals right, I'll get into that and, and the the nations are not be, being deceived right now no no ma'am they're not individuals are and I'll explain that here in a little little bit I've I've explained it over in every single video but I'll explain it again it's my pleasure okay also where in time do you place Zechariah 14 16 17 it 
takes place after verse 5 where it says, And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And also after verse 12, when he melts their faces off, yet there are families refusing to come up and worship him, the king. All right. I, I will get back to this. I'll, I'm going to start with uh, Isaiah, and then I'll finish with this. Okay, so let me just say right now that all the saints with thee. All right. So I've heard this uh, uh, many times. Many times people will say, well, when Jesus comes back, he'll come with his saints. Right? He'll come with his saints. You, and he, There's an example of it that you pointed out. I want to show you another example here. Real quickly. Just to, I'm just doing, going to do this real super, super duper quick here. Lightning fast. All right. In the book of Jude somewhere, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. If I'm, if I can remember anything, uh, I could be wrong. I could be way off. Where's this? There it is, right there. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, "Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand, ten thousands of his saints." All right. So this, what this is referring to, is when we are lifted up into the air. Uh, this was consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This is no different. So when the Lord comes, he's going to come with us. Remember in John chapter 14, <clears throat> Jesus says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And we we read about uh, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, and then 1 Thessalonians 4. How when the Lord comes, we are lifted up. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We will be changed. We will be transformed into our glorified bodies. Where? Up in the air. As we are lifted up into the air, we're being separated from the unsaved. And lo and behold, we're up in the air, and the unsaved are still at our feet. And the Lord comes. The Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. So he draws us up. We're with him right now. We're with him right now, but then when he comes, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. So this, that, what you're talking about, and this also here in Jude, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. We are with him right now. All right, and so we will meet him in the air when he comes in the clouds of heaven. We are the saints. Make no mistake about it. All right, there aren't if if you're imagining that there are a group of saints in the air, in the sky, in heaven, and that those saints are going to come with Jesus, you're on the wrong side of the fence. <laughs> because they're going to execute judgment upon all, and not some, all. And all means all. all right, perhaps you've heard me say that before. All means all. All right, so if you're not a part of the group of saints then you're on the wrong side. Okay. All right. I mean, that's pretty clear. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. If people try to make this, well, this is uh, the first of 22 returns. No. No. Look, I get it. But it talks about Jesus returning over 20 times in the New Testament. That's not a different return. All right. So over 20 times he returns, but there's not one single mention of him leaving after he returns. And sometimes we just got to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Sometimes we just got to connect the dots. All right. We are the saints. All right. We are the elect. We are the chosen of God. There is only one group of people that are saved. And we're all one with Christ. All right. So let's get into, I was going to go to Isaiah first, it sounds like I just, no, yeah, yeah, I can still go back there. I'll still go back there. No? 
Uh, I better finish it. I'll go here first. Uh, flip it around here. Flip it around here. 16 and 17, is that right? And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. That, that's it that's why am I thinking that's not it why am I thinking that's not it um, <clears throat> am, I, am I wrong here Do I got the wrong do I got the wrong stuff here? Why am I thinking of something else? Oh, what am I looking for? First of all, what are you asking here? Also, where in time do you place it takes place ow oh, it takes place after verse five. Okay, I got you. <clears throat> Alright, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto us all. Yeah. Ye shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and in winter shall it be and the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day shall there be one Lord in his name one all the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon south of Jerusalem and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hananiel 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 unto the king's wine presses and men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth and they shall live and reign for a thousand years no that's not what it says okay and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. And his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Gold, silver, apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, the camel, of the ass, and the, of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king and the Lord of the hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague 
wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. All right, so... Uh, and then, okay, and then in that day there shall be upon the bells horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the whole Lord's house shall be like the bow, the bowls, excuse me, the bowls before the altar. Yeah, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be in holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite. Canaanite, Canaanite, Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So let's go back to verse 16. One thing, I probably should have started at verse 1. I wasn't going to read the whole thing, but I couldn't stop. So, one thing you notice here, and it it's prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. In that day, in this day, on that day, whatever. And it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass, and, and then there shall be, and it shall come to pass, and it shall be. This shall be. In that day shall. All right. And so we're getting prophecy after prophecy. It's not totally unlike what we're reading in the book of Revelation, where we're getting many visions, where the angel is showing John many visions of things which must shortly come to pass. And so, again, and it shall come to pass in that day, and, it, and then it shall be a plague, and it shall come to pass. So we're getting many visions, or getting many uh, you know visions or prophecies of what will be for them. All right. So, and then now, how do we relate this to the New Testament? Well, it can be complicated if you're not real sure of the whole Bible in general. I get it, and uh, and then. You, if you listen to somebody that doesn't know and understand the Bible, it can be complicated. Even it can screw you up, is what it can do. Let me try to make this real clear. First of all, it's important to understand that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of this world. The unsaved will be destroyed, and the saved will be given eternal life. Uh, in the glorified body and there will be a new heaven and a new earth all right <clears throat> once you understand that then you got it okay just hold on now listen and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King and the Lord of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the saved. They're saved. Those are the saved people. Just hold on. If you're struggling with this, take a deep breath. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth under the Jerusalem to worship the King, Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Those are the unsaved. They don't have the rain, they don't have the water, they don't have the spirit, and they will be destroyed. All right, now, if you're still struggling, take a deep breath. Relax. Consider. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, not saved, there shall be the plague. The plague. We read about that in Exodus. We read about that in Revelation. It's the wrath of God at the end of the world. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. That's the wrath of God. They're not saved. Right. See the difference? This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the 
Feast of Tabernacles. In that day, okay, so this is the vision that we're being given here in Zechariah 14. Once you understand that there are the saved and the unsaved, and that there's the end of the world, and there's a new heaven and a new earth coming, you got everything that you possibly could ask for to understand these verses in the Bible, whether it's Zechariah, or here in a second I'll go to Isaiah and show you the same thing. Once you understand that, you it everything else is going to open up to you. All right. Once really, once you start trusting what the Bible says, all these things will be shown to you by the Spirit of God because you're trusting God now and not you know these false liars these false teachers these guys don't understand nothing the guy's an expert he's a scholar he's a theologian some people call him God Almighty and he don't know squat this guy he's got everything wrong it's incredible how wrong somebody could be there ain't that many people that are this as wrong as this guy right here and he don't believe the Bible at all. Well, no, no wonder he doesn't understand anything. He don't believe it. But boy, he got people fooled, don't he? I mean, he's got people fooled because he looks Jew. You no, know, he's a he's he's a Jew. He's you know one of the elect, right? It's incredible. This. That's what people think. He think, well, he's got special bloodline that goes back to God. He got different blood. He got different sources. He's smarter than everybody else. It's weird. It's weird. That instead of believing in God, people will believe in Jonathan Khan as. God. They won't believe the Bible, but they'll believe the words that come out of his mouth. And so when that happens, people become delusional. And they deserve to be delusional. And so, Maranatha B7, I want to encourage you to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. It comes directly from God. Thy word forever is settled in heaven. The word of God comes from heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It doesn't come from man. Who told you that? You don't get that from the Bible. You don't read that in the Bible. You got that from another man. Think about that. Okay, give me one second here. Uh, prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost or something. I butchered that. I'm sure of it. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So God. The Holy Ghost is God. That's God. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, it's God. The Bible comes from God. That's important. Once you figure that out, your eyes will be open to so much. It's incredible. It's all about faith. It's always been about faith. Heaven and earth pass away. Let's see. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. See, how do you explain that? How do you explain that? Other than the word of God comes from God. But my word shall not pass away. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right? The word of God is quick. 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This is not this doesn't come from man. This comes from God. And once you start believing God, then these things uh, will open up to you. Okay? When you are believing man, the veil is upon your heart, you won't understand and you deserve not to understand. Because you're not trusting God, you're trusting the guy with dark hair and a big nose. Alright, so let's go to Isaiah 65. 17 through 20, Isaiah 65, Isaiah 65, yeah, I forgot already, what was it, 17 through 20, all right, for behold, I create new heavens and new earth, the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be heard no more. Shall no more, I'm sorry. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence in infinite days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. All right, so let's do it right there. Let's, let's first of all, let's first of all, let's go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. All right, in Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Can I make a comment real fast here? Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't say nothing. Maybe I shouldn't say nothing. Well, this here... <laughs> I've heard, well, I heard somebody this morning watching some goofy video. The guy says, this, when, when, he says when uh, the Bible talks about the sea, it's often referred to as, a, um, I think he said trouble and, and, and uh, rebellion and, and, and I don't know what he said. A bunch of goofy stuff that it didn't, and I was like, man, what in the world are you talking about? Okay, C means water. It means mass of, uh, or mass, uh, water mass, if you will. A, a mass of water. Am I saying that right? I mean, when you think of the whales in the sea, that's, hey, that's a lot of water, right? There's, it's a mass of water. It's water. I mean, the fish of the sea. And so, uh, I was like, what in the world? Am I missing something? So I did a um, keyword search for the word C. Just to make sure I'm not going crazy. I'm not crazy. The guy's a liar. But it almost always, it's mentioned over 300 times. And it's almost, at every single time, it's talking about water. You look at Daniel, it gives you a vision of the beast coming up out of the sea, that's a vision. And you could say, well, that's not actually the water. Well, it is, it is in accordance to the vision. The vision is spiritual, but the sea is water. The beast that comes up out of the sea, you could, it's sure, you can say, well, the sea represents people. Yeah, I get that. But the vision itself still represents water. And the beast is the world power. Okay, so the beast is not the beast, but rather world power. The sea is not the sea, but rather people. Whatever. 
All right, but the C is still the C. And, and you got over 300 mentions of the word C. And other than Daniel in the book of Revelation, I don't see, I mean, unless you're talking about, uh, uh, in, what was it, Solomon's Porch, where they they made a pool, and it's the word C is used. Anyways, who cares? Who cares? I'm, I'm rambling. Anyway, it just... It, when you say often, it often means something other than what it says. Man, what are you talking about? I don't think you've even... I, I remember back... Oh, I'm, I'm rambling. I remember back in 2012 when I was studying heaven, earth, moon, star, sun. C was in one of them. C was one of them. Make, I just want to know, are there in any hidden mysteries regarding the word C? It's a good word study. So again, if you ever do a word study, just go through, uh, you do, do that one word, and then make sure that you know and understand every single verse for peace sake, right? So that you, there's no confusion there, because we can know the truth. Absolutely, we can know the truth. So anyways, let's go here. All right, so we got heaven and earth. All right, and then in Revelation 21, we got heaven and earth, right? Uh, I'm sorry, a new heaven and a new earth, right? And I create new heavens and a new earth, right? And be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. And her people a joy. We are a joy and a rejoicing to the Lord. And we will rejoice and have joy. Absolutely. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. Enjoy my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Notice here in verse 4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain right for the former things are passed away right and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind okay verse 20 there shall be no more thence and infinite days nor an old man that has not filled his days I consider that there will be no more an infant of days. If you just block this off, focus on this, I think you can figure out what it means. No? So now we have an infant of days where we grow, we develop, and we progress into young men and women but there will be no more of that nor will there be an old man that has not filled his days I right, say so you could you could argue oh I'm an old man right now and I haven't filled my days well there it won't be like that in eternal life all right because we have eternal life uh, so you can't say, well, I've, I've filled my days. It's time to die. Cause when you filled your days, it's time to die, but we will never die in the life to come hereafter. Okay. For the child shall die in hundred years old. Now, uh, this is, uh, this is important to understand. All right, I mean, again, once you understand that this world's come to an end, right, and that Jesus is coming in clouds of heaven and we're going to be taken up out of this world and delivered into a new world, once you understand the simplicity of that, makes makes it so easy to understand this. For the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred shall be accursed. What's that mean? Notice here, this might help here a little bit because this is a divider. 
All right, this is establishing eternal life, and this is establishing uh, perimeters leading up to eternal life. All right. So right now Jesus has set up his kingdom. All right, and those of us that are born of God, we have eternal life right now. Right, right now we are a child of God. Right now, we are a son of God. Right now, we are a son of God. Right now, because we're oops, hold on a second, that might not exist. Right now, my consider this my little children, these things are right eye unto you that you sin not. My little children. We are children of God right now. Right? And then it says, Oh, somewhere. Where am I at here? I got to do it this way. I got to do it this way. Ah, that's First John chapter 3. It was in between uh, 2 and 12. I knew it. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now, we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. All right. it's, there's not a difference between sons and children. There's no difference. No difference whatsoever. All right, maybe this will help if I go to... Exodus 19. I got my go-tos that maybe might help somebody understand. In verse 5. Um, oh, wait a second. Where are we at here? Yeah, right there. Verse 5. And now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine this is God talking by the way okay in case there was any confusion <laughs> and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel the sons of Israel the children of Israel the sons of God the children of God it's all the same thing there's no difference. People try to confuse the meanings of simple words because they themselves are confused and they have no understanding and they believe not the Word of God. All right, so again, for the children, I'm sorry, for the child shall die in 100 years old. Right now, we are in that phase where a child of God. Right? When you are born of God, when you are born of God, you are a child of God. Have you ever read John chapter 3? All right. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So when we are born again, we are a child of God. Nicodemus didn't understand it, and don't. Do you understand it? Nicodemus was an expert, a scholar, a theologian. He had all the titles. He had all the the pieces of paper on the wall, signifying how smart he was, how much schooling he had. He was a some people call him a genius, I'm sure of it. He didn't understand nothing. He had all the titles, didn't know nothing, right? Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a great question, right? A great question. And the answer is, you're dumber than dog do. No, it's not what it, that's not what Jesus is talking about at all. 
Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. I marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. So there's the children that are born of the flesh, and then there are children that are born of the Spirit. So go back to Isaiah. The child shall die a hundred years old. Right? The child shall die. It is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. So the child dies. The Son of God dies at a hundred years old. That's what this is talking about. This is a Son of God, a child of God, that dies in the flesh, but then is resurrected at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. But the sinner, being the same age, the sinner, the same age, notice here, and being a hundred years old, shall be the same age. A child's a hundred years old, the sinner's a hundred years old. One is a child, the other is cursed. See, the child shall die, but live. Right? The child will be resurrected. The sinner will not be resurrected. That's what this is talking about. Alright. It's not complicated. But I get it. There are a lot of people lying. Lying through their teeth because they don't understand. And they're really it's like a it's like a a weird comic book religion that these guys are teaching. This idea of a thousand bonus years. Or you know, they most of them are afraid to admit they, they teach this comic book religion because they're putting their hope into being transformed into their 16 year old bodies and just going nuts and having sex with everything like they did when they were 16 that's their fantasy to return back to their glory days that sounds wonderful it's appealing and people eat it up I get it yippee yappa Yabba dabba doo, Scooby Dooby Doo, you know, the good old days, right? The problem is that that's not supported by the Bible at all. That, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a problem because there is no more sex after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You're in for a shocker. All right, so I hope that explains that uh, because it's really simple. It, it is so simple. Once you understand that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of this world, okay? And then it's the beginning, of course, of eternal life where there's a new heavens and a new earth. It's really that simple. And so when you read here, the child shall die at 100 years old, that's got to be referring to now. And then... This here, no more thence and in infinite days, is talking about the new heavens and the new earth. Right? So we've got to rightly divide the word of truth. When we do that, we understand he's um, in Isaiah 65, it's prophesying. He's prophesying. The Lord is prophesying that there will come a new heavens and a new earth that'll come that's what we're putting our hope into right we're gonna have great uh, joy and rejoice in this right and there will be no more in infinite days we have eternal life an old man that has not filled his days we shall never die and then the child shall die in hundred years old meaning the child of God will die in 100 years old, he'll be 100 years old, and then die. Because he's a child of God, he will be resurrected. But the sinner, being 100 years old, will be cursed. He'll, so like, uh, for example, D Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Should I go to it? 
Should I go to it? Uh, let me go to it. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Right? Compare this. The child, being a hundred years old, shall die. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. So the child that dies at a hundred will awake. In other words, they'll be resurrected to everlasting life. But the other guy, same age, the same 100 years old, but he's a sinner because he does not believe. He's going to die too, but he's going to be cursed. The shame and everlasting contempt. Uh, you see the difference here? This is forecast, if you will, prophesied, taught all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, the same thing. Over and over, it's consistent all throughout the Bible. And, um, you know, in particular, I, you know, I'd like to get into more into this here. Uh, and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build in another head and inhabit. They shall not plant in another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. The work of their hands. Consider that and consider that they shall not build in another inhabit. We're going to have complete freedom in the life to come hereafter. We're not going to be like, hey, Bob, can I borrow your golf cart today? And go golfing on somebody else's golf course. It's going to cost me 50 bucks, but I'll save a little bit of money if you let me borrow your golf cart. It's not going to be like that at all. You're going to have your own golf course, your own golf cart, your own golf clubs, and you're going to golf all you want. Right? It's not like this world that we're in now where we got to pay taxes and we got to, you know, pay more taxes. And then we got to pay taxes on top of the taxes and then our taxes get taxed. It's not like that at all. You know, and then we got to, then we got to try to find food on top of that. And then we gotta have clothes on top of that, and all that, and we gotta just pay, 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 pay. What? It, just all the money coming in goes straight, straight out. Uh, sometimes I wonder why do I even put money in my pocket? Cause it's coming right out. I might as well just hold it in my hand and wait for somebody to come take it. Well, in the life to come hereafter, it's not gonna be like that at all. At all. All right, and it's. It's wonderful, man. It's what I'm putting my hope into. And this is eternal life, man. This is eternal life. This is not a thousand years. Well, we're, for a thousand years, we're going to be enjoying the work of our own hands. But then after that, fire comes out from heaven, and from God out of heaven and devour and destroys us all. And what in the world? These guys ain't putting any thought into nothing. For a thousand years, and then what? You take over? What is it? What's going on with these people? that are preaching a thousand years after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I think they're all insane. All right, so let me make sure I got everything covered here. Can you please, um, Isaiah 65, 17 in time. All right, so, yeah, so hopefully I made that very clear here. All right, this is in the future, new heavens and new earth, right? And then uh, right, even right here, right here that's all in the future this is right now and this is a prelude to the future if you will this is uh, the separation that we see a difference between the saved and the unsaved and the saved of course um, will inherit the kingdom of God when there's a new heavens and a new earth okay pretty simple stuff but I get it I get it. I really do. When people are lying all the time, there just comes a point to where you got to stop listening to the liars 
and start believing the Word of God. Start believing the Bible that you hold in your hands because it comes from God. It ain't coming from Reverend Smitty. It don't come from the Roman Catholic Church. It comes from heaven above. All right. And you, you ought to know that. All right. Okay. All right. I agree with you. Christ reigns. Jesus reigns forever. He is king now forevermore. Does not change. His will happens spiritually on earth. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we pray for that. Right. Serious answers only, please, though I know you love to make jokes. I, I, didn't, I don't know if anybody could could pick up on my stupid humor or not. Sometimes I'm just I'm not funny. Sometimes. If I showed you my face, then people would start laughing. Huh? But are you saying that right now the nations are not, they're not being deceived? Maybe it should. I need, do I need to touch on that? Yeah. When I look at the world, my heart breaks because of all the deception. Right. So again, the nations right there. The nations. You got to separate the nations from the individuals. All right. So let's go, let's see if I can be real quick here. Let's see how quick I can be. In. Revelation chapter 12 or 20 excuse me, whatever it is somewhere in the Bible Revelation 20 notice here All right, maybe it'll help if I explain explain it in beforehand okay so before baby Jesus was born there was one nation of God I showed you in Exodus 19, right, how the children of Israel was the holy nation of God. All right, maybe I need to go back. All right, follow me on this. So in the Old Testament, oops, I didn't mean to do it that way. In the Old Testament, there was one nation of God. Outside of that nation were the nations deceived. Okay. So here in Exodus 19, the Lord says, Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a peculiar treasure above all people. It's talking about the children of Israel. The holy nation. They are a holy nation. Now baby Jesus comes along and he uh, does all the work necessary for eternal life, for salvation. And now he takes the kingdom and gives it, makes it available to whosoever believes in him. All right, so now he's torn down that wall. So now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, consider this. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right, so Jesus has made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Right? In First Peter chapter 2, ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Now, we are the nation of God. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, there was this one nation. Outside of that nation were the nations deceived by Satan. In other words, Satan is being void of the Spirit of God. It is a spirit void of God. Think of it that way. 
All right, I think people get in trouble when they think of Satan as a second God, as another God. Isn't like there's two gods, there's only one God, but I don't know, people are crazy. But Satan is absent or void of God. All right, so one nation of God. Outside of that nation were the nations deceived by Satan. Okay, and now Jesus comes along and makes available the kingdom of God to whosoever believes in him. Now, we that are Christ are the nation kingdom, or I'm sorry, the nation of God, excuse me. We are the nation of God right now. All right, you, th you consider, um, uh, this, oh, there we go. Consider the seed of Abraham, and he saith not seeds as of many, but seed. All right now to Abraham and a seed where the promise was made, he saith not and a seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. See, we are Abraham's seed right now. We are a holy nation right now, okay? Right now, um, right now we are in the thousand years, right? Right now we are in the thousand years. All right, so right now, um, the nations are not being deceived. Individuals are being deceived, no question about it. Satan's not destroyed, right? We'll go back to Genesis 3, verse 15, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Lord is going to stomp his foot on the head of the uh, serpent, destroying all evil forever. That happens at the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. See, he's above. The serpent is below. He's going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent. In other words, fire is going to come down from God out of heaven and devour them. All right, so here, when it says he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years are finished, this is in direct reference to the kingdom of God being made available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there is not um, uh, one nation of God, uh, you know, one boundary, one country, and outside of that country are, is the, you know, are the nations deceived. Not like it was in the Old Testament. It's different, right? So now... Um, consider this now look it says it even tells us the purpose for the for Satan being loosed right and after that he must be loosed a little season right that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season why why what, what's gonna happen What's, this idea that all oh, people are going to stop sinning for a thousand years and then all of a sudden Satan's going to be loosed and everybody's going to start sinning like crazy and then God's going to send fire and kill us all. So all we got to put our hope into is a thousand bonus years of sexual activity that's not considered sin or something. I don't know what's going on here. Really? I mean seriously? Because that's what they say. Hey, it's going to be peace. There ain't going to be no sin. But we're going to be having sex and having children. See, they don't have any understanding whatsoever. It's a comic book religion that they're teaching. All right, it tells us right here. Consider this. All right, just consider it. If you're struggling still, take a deep breath. Relax. Consider what the Word of God says. That he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and then when he's loosed at the end of the thousand years when the thousand years are expired 
Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why? To go out to deceive the nations. In other words, to lead them or to draw them together. To gather them together. Just like it says in Genesis 3 verse 15, It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his head heal right you consider psalm 110 the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool in acts chapter 2 it says till i make thy foes thy footstool in first corinthians 15 for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet revelation chapter 3 verse 9 behold i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee see Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet and then what happens the Lord stomps his foot boom on the head of the serpent destroying all evil for us ever in other words fire comes down from god out of heaven and devours them right in second peter chapter 3 behold hold, let me read it before, let me get to it before i butcher it the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Right? The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment perdition of ungodly men. The same event, same time. It's not a different end of the world. It's not a different wrath of God. It's not a different new heavens and a new earth. It's the same thing. It's all you have to do is connect the dots. This thing is prophesied over and over and over and over and over. It's the same thing all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's incredible. Once your eyes are open, you can see it. In order for your eyes to be open, you have to believe the words that you're reading. It's incredible how simple it is. And people don't want to believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. For whatever reason, because they prefer darkness, they they prefer mystery and confusion, uncertainty, they love it. Drama? Oh, they love drama. They don't want to know the truth. It's not as fun. They, they're more fun being confused, silly, and stupid. They, I'm not kidding you. That's what I think. People don't want to know. But I'm telling you, you can know if you want to know and once you do know it's so simple it's amazing it's incredible and it's you know extremely peaceful knowing that there's no uncertainty here at all we can absolutely know what our destination is what our hope is what we can look forward to absolutely okay all right, hopefully that clears some things up for you okay uh, just a rehash real quickly this here when Satan is uh, bound all right this is basically Jesus coming and and um, he's he's uh, binding the strong man if you will all right he's tying him up so he can't deceive the nation so that this way now everybody in, throughout the whole world can be saved all right and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life all right so the kingdom of God is available to everybody that's the difference all right okay anyways I appreciate that if you want me to follow up uh, anything you have further questions hopefully I it was very thorough and uh, uh, thanks again. All right, that's it.